Humans who lived on planet Earth a million years ago had big brains and sharp stone tools. However, still, they dwelt in persistent fear of predators, occasionally hunted large game, and survived mainly by amassing plants, scooping up insects, stalking small animals, and eating the carrion left behind by other more robust carnivores. We often feel that choice is a specialty. However, a choice is not a specialty. The options at our disposal may be things. Nevertheless, a choice, a choice is an action. It is not just something we possess but something we perform. This experience helped me realize that while we may not always exercise control over our options, we always have command over how we select among them. The word priority made inroads into English in the 1400s. It was singular. It expressed the very first or prior thing. It stayed singular for the next five centuries. The paradigm shift came in the 1900s. Did we pluralize it and start discussing priorities? Illogically, we supposed that altering the word could twist reality. Attempting to reconstruct the lives of ancient hunter-gatherers from the available artifacts is challenging. One of the most striking differences between the ancient foragers and their agricultural and industrial descendants is that foragers had limited artifacts to commence with, and these played a relatively subtle role in their lives.
the most effective use of early stone tools was to crack open bones to reach the marrow. Some scientists opine this was our original niche. However, just as woodpeckers have expertise in extracting insects from the trunks of trees, the first humans excelled in extracting marrow from bones. Think about the state of your closet when you fail to organize it. Does it stay spick and span with just those few clothes which appeal to you to wear hanging on the rack? Of course not. When you make no deliberate effort to organize it, the wardrobe becomes messy and loaded with clothes you wear once in a blue moon. To stop the accumulation of all wealth and power with a minor aristocracy, the process is to control data ownership. In ancient times land was the most significant investment in the world, politics was always a struggle to manage land, and if too much land had too few owners society separated into aristocrats and commoners. Mandating higher authorities to nationalize the data will presumably mitigate the influence of prominent corporations, though it provides unabated support to digital dictatorships. Politicians are like musicians, their instrument is the human emotional and biochemical system.
The threat is that if we finance too much in creating AI and too little in growing a human consciousness, the significantly refined artificial intelligence of computers might only help to entrust the natural absurdity of humans. We are investigating and evolving human capabilities, mainly thriving upon the primary requirements of the monetary and political scenario rather than our long-term requirements as conscious beings. For example, my supervisor wants me to answer emails at the drop of a hat, but he has little interest in tasting and appreciating my lunch. The economic scenario stresses me to develop and expand my investment portfolio, though it does not incentivize me to extend and diversify my kindness. So I seek to decipher the secrets of the stock exchange while not earnestly comprehending the profound causes of anguish. There is no denying this conviction that globalization and the Internet reduce the differences between nations, they risk enlarging the hatred between classes. Moreover, as society seems to gain global consolidation, the species might split into distinct biological castes. By 2100, 
the wealthy might be more qualified, innovative, and competent than the slum dwellers. Once a real void in capability opens between the rich and the needy, filling it will become almost unimaginable. Liberalism credibility is on the decline exactly when the twin breakthroughs in information technology and biotechnology encounter us with the most pressing problems our species has ever experienced. The coalition of infotech and biotech might soon force the generation of billions of pink slips and sabotage both freedom and parity. Liberalism credibility is on the decline exactly when the twin breakthroughs in information technology and biotechnology encounter us with the most pressing problems our species has ever experienced. The coalition of infotech and biotech might soon force the generation of billions of pink slips and sabotage both freedom and parity. Democratic regimes acquired the place of brutal dictatorships, free enterprise overpowered economic constraints. People discovered to believe in themselves and pursue their hearts rather than blindly following biased priests and hidebound practices. Open roads, white bridges, and state of at art airports substituted walls, trenches, and barbed wire barricades.
countries that join this indomitable march of advancement will be awarded stability and wealth sooner. But conversely, countries that endeavor to oppose the unavoidable will suffer the effects until they, too, see the light, open their barriers and liberalize their communities, politics, and markets. The accelerating speed of technological upheaval heightens the sense of disorientation and forthcoming doom. The liberal political system took its shape during the industrial era to handle a world of steam engines, oil refineries, and television sets. Negotiating with the continuous uprisings in information technology and biotechnology is challenging. In the contemporary epoch, computers have made the financial system so complex that few humans can comprehend it. As AI improves, in all probability, we will soon reach a point when no human can make sense of finance anymore. And such development will be counterproductive to the political process. Humans were always far more competent at developing tools and using them prudently. It is more comfortable to exploit a river by constructing a dam across it than it is to anticipate all the complicated outcomes this will have for the broader ecological system. Likewise, it will be more comfortable to turn the flow of our senses than to divine what it will do to our psychology or social procedures. <laughs> 